Hello, weather first meteorologist Gary Frank. And, you know, this isn't exactly fully weather related. It will be down the road, but we've been talking about eclipses coming up over the next six months. Now, the big one is in April. That's the total eclipse that makes everything dark. And that's the totality, the path that's growing through our area again. But there's actually one that's coming up in October. It's an annular solar eclipse, and it will not fully cover up the sun. Part of the moon will cover it up. And I want to show you what this is going to look like here throughout the entire United States. And I'll show you what the difference is because I had to look it up myself and I want to kind of bring that to your attention as well. The annular solar eclipse is on the 14th of October. That's a Saturday. And for most of our area, we'll see somewhere between 65% or so that is covered up by the sun. The path of the annular eclipse, which is not totality, but the highest path is really through the desert southwest in the four corners. What does this mean? Well, what is an annual or solar eclipse? There's types of solar eclipses. One of them is a partial one where we see part of the moon cover up the sun, but you don't really notice. You notice something maybe is off when it comes to being outdoors, but you don't really notice it. That's from the penumbra. That's a type of shadow. That's a smaller shadow. And really all these have to do with the shadow, whether or not it's a smaller shadow or the darkest shadow, which will be uh, the, the corona. For the annular one, it's the ring of fire, where the shadow is not quite great enough to cover up the full bit of the sun. So you're still able to see the sun around that. And that's what it's going to look like in the Four Corners region, not here. But the total eclipse, like we have next April on the 8th, that's where the corona, that's where you're able to see that bright uh, burst around. So I want to look at a couple of different things here. Uh, the partial eclipse for us begins at 1032. It's going to be like any other day where it's sunny, but gradually, if you wear the eclipse glasses, which is probably the easiest way for you to see it, you're going to see this by about 1115. That's where you're going to start to see for about a 45 minute period here. That's what it's going to look like. You're not going to be able to notice that with the naked eye, but then our maximum eclipse will start out, go from 1115 all the way to 1157. That's where our maximum eclipse is. This is what it's going to look like if you put those eclipse glasses on. It's going to have part of the sun covered up. And then as we look at the partial ending, I'll start at 1157 and I'll wind it all the way to 1231. You'll see that's going toward the bottom half of the sun this time. And then eventually it exits away by about 115 and then it's just back to normal sunshine. So right now, uh, once again, partial begins at 1032 and that's where you're going to start to see that that moon that at least shadow work its way into the sun. And then our maximum eclipse is at 1157. That's what it's going to look like. And then partial is ending at 127. Of course, the moon shadow going away from the sun and we're back to normal here. So what does this mean? Well, as we try to figure out uh, if the weather's going to cooperate, just a small sample size, uh, I looked at October 14th, the last few years, 2019, it was mostly sunny, uh, 2020, partly cloudy, 2021, we had more clouds. So Obviously, we want it to be as clear as possible. That hadn't been an issue of recent, but overall, just in a small sample size, it is a pretty clear day, all things considered. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, we've been in a pretty good drought of recent, so you know our luck it will be cloudy, but we do need full sunshine to be able to see that. Uh, for just some things I want you to note, you're not going to be able to go outside and see this right away. You might notice things are a little different because there will be partial shadow, but you won't be able to see it with the naked eye. I want you to dig out those eclipse glasses from the last solar eclipse, and if you don't have them, get them and you'll be able to use them for this one and in April. The sun is not fully covered. We're not going to see that totality darkness here. Uh, there may be, you know, maybe some minor temperature variations, but uh, you're not going to see that fully covered sun. The eclipse duration is around three hours. So if I go back there and, and I'll post this as well, you're going to see that from about 1032 to 115. So it's around three hours, uh, give or take here in our area. So we're hoping for the best weather conditions that we can get. We'll continue to monitor that as we get closer, of course, and keep you posted on the cloud cover and coverage. But otherwise, it should be one that's worth watching here locally as we continue to monitor that progress and we'll keep you up to date on weather conditions as well.